Aloha kako. We are gathered here today in the presence of God to reflect upon the path that has brought us here and to look forward to the branching road that lies ahead of us. Whether it be our academic pursuits, personal relationships, or spiritual lives, we have all experienced moments of growth and transformation. Like the hala tree, we are strongly rooted in our responsibility to the community and will spread out into society to share our gifts and passions. Each of our unique perspectives and experiences have raised us into a beautiful grove of young trees beginning to flower and fruit with our accomplishments. And now it is time to branch out to the world, to share forth what we have learned. We will continue to gather strength as we nourish the stems that will reach the stars in the sky. Our gathering represents our resilience, our growth, and the hope we have to watch the seeds we've planted sprout into fruits of love. The time has come, and while we shall grow to reach for new things, we must never forget our roots. May we approach the future with courage, curiosity, and a willingness to learn and evolve. This isn't saying goodbye to the memories and experiences we've had at Punahou. This is acknowledging our past and staying connected to our memories and roots as we grow and extend towards our futures. Please stand and join us in singing for the beauty of the earth. On behalf of your chaplains, Chaplain Maduras and Hayashi, we give thanks to God for each and every one of you. And we call upon God, a God that's full of grace and full of glory, to be with us now as we journey together today. E pulikako, join me in a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, our hearts are open to receive all the goodness that surrounds us in this hour. Mahalo keokua for the joy of human love. We are grateful for the life-giving source of each breath that we take. We give thanks, O oh God, for the beauty and wonder of these lands kapunaho, and these your children of the new spring. We are overjoyed and stand arm in arm, hand in hand, weaving our lives together 
for this blessed day and forevermore. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 92, verses 12 through 14. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green proclaiming, the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. The word of the Lord. I have two readings selected by the class to share. The first from Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And from Luke 8.14 through 15. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they're choked by life's worries Riches and pleasures, they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Good evening, parents, faculty, family, and friends. My name is Royshel Trixie Agnarangai, and I have the pleasure of delivering a speech this evening on behalf of the entire class of 2023. Look at us. Look at how far we have come. From the playgrounds of Omidyar, the stairs of Case, the green grass of the academy, to the stage here at Hemeter Gym. It's safe to say that we made it. Yet, through all those changes, one constant has endured, the lily pond. Have I know, here there is water. Our chapel theme this year, referring to the water from the new spring, Ka Punaho. The lily pond has witnessed our years of growth and change as a class and as individuals. No matter when you joined the class of 2023, the lily pond nourished us and watched us grow. Like a guardian, 
it took care of each one of us. And now the spring that welcomed us now watches as we leave. Yet as we pursue our various paths, let us remember we can always return to this life-giving spring we call Kapunoho. Water is resilient. When you pour it on a path, it flows. Regardless of the grooves or rocks in its path, water accommodates and continues on. We, the class of 2023, both collectively and individually encountered a legion of obstacles throughout our time at Punahou. Yet we've learned to fluidly adapt and overcome these obstacles and use them to our advantage. And now we stand on this stage, a sum of our experiences, preparing ourselves for even sharper twists and turns and bigger boulders as we graduate and continue on our journeys of life. To the community, faculty, and staff of Punahou, thank you for being our place of nourishment. We will forever treasure the time, work, and effort committed to shaping us into the students and individuals we are today. To Dean Aaron and Dean Dean, thank you for being by our side every step of the way leading up to today. We will always remember the love and care you have for each of us. To the families, friends, teachers, and our mentors, thank you for being our lily ponds. You witnessed us becoming who we are and have constantly been there for each one of us. We know that as we pursue our dreams in new schools and places, you will always be there for us. To the class of 2023, thank you for all of the memories and learning experiences throughout these past years. I am beyond grateful to be one of your classmates and I genuinely appreciate each and every single one of you. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for everyone. In closing, remember everyone, you are as powerful as water because you're not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. You've shown potential to adapt absorb and overcome any challenge that comes your way. You possess the power and potential of the world within you. It is up to you on how you want to make your mark and make your abundance known. Become the life source of your own communities no matter where you go. He vai no kako, we are water indeed. Thank you. Please stand and rise as we sing for all things bright and beautiful.
Four years ago, I would not have even guessed that I would be standing before you wearing a holoku, graduating in the state of Hawaii. Four years ago, I was on a flight from Maryland to Oahu, leaving the only life I ever knew. Four years ago, I stepped onto Punahou School campus for the very first time, and I instantly became part of the Punahou Ohana. Little did I know that the next four years of my time at, in the academy would be filled with great memories. Memories that I have shared with this class of amazing students, but most importantly, my friends. And the class of 2023, the people who I now consider my new family. When talking about Punahou, we can't not talk about the community that it creates. I will always remember my first day of school. School had just ended, and I was in the car when my parents asked me, Maya, how was your first day of school? I paused, because I didn't know what else to say besides, everyone is just so nice. That's all I said. Of course, I'm sure my parents thought I was just saying that to make them feel reassured. But it was true. In every class that I was in, I never felt left out, judged, or lost in a place that I barely knew. And that's the beauty of this class of 2023. The ability to make every student feel welcomed and feel like they belong. Now when I say belong, I don't mean everyone sticks to one box. Our class of 2023 makes it very easy for everyone to be unapologetically themselves. I mean, our variety show's theme was bread. But whether one of our schedules includes track meets on the weekend and early morning brand practices, or another has glass bowling casts every day and they have to build a carnival train in the evening, we always show up for each other no matter what crazy schedules that we have. From passionate student sections, to attending concerto concerts, to putting on the best carnival, our class always comes together to make sure that everyone feels the love of our 2023 Ohana. I am so proud to say that I can graduate along this class of active volunteers, college athletes, innovative scientists, talented musicians and artists, and most importantly, students who are going to make an impact on the world, no matter what we do. Because I know that 10 years from now, I will get a notification on my phone that reads, Punahou graduate, class of 23, helps find a solution to blah, blah, blah. Now, that blah, blah, blah is up to us. Whatever the article says, I know that we will all be rooting for and congratulating one another on anything that we accomplish. Because that's what our class of 2023 does. We are and will always be together.
calm waters flow up from the earth. The fish swim lazily and the turtles rest in the sun. The light reflects off the water and shines through stained glass windows. And in the center of it all stands the hollow tree. The lily pond in all of its glory lives clear in my mind, an image that in many ways convinced me to come to Punho freshman year. When I started, I was admittedly terrified of this strange new world I was entering. Joining a class of 400-something students after being homeschooled was intimidating and yet exhilarating. As I got to know the people I would learn to call family and the campus I would someday call home. One of the greatest experiences I have had here has been learning to become a part of such a grandiose legacy on the historic land of Ka Punahou. Ka Punahou, the new spring, the cherished waters that we have grown up with, their mythical origins that we know so well, the story of Kealoha and Mukaka, the elderly couple who in times of famine and drought received visions of the water that was here, Hevaino. There is water, a phrase that we have heard so many times before and yet rarely pause to appreciate its significance. A significance that tells us that we are the children of Kapunaho. We have grown up by the grace of this new spring, its waters giving us knowledge and life, its story giving us a sense of home. Whether we have spent our entire childhoods here on this campus, or I've only found a home here in these final few years of high school, we are protected by its ever-present embrace. We have grown from the spring just like the hala. The hala, its slender leaves and outstretched mangrove roots, our symbol, our seal that represents us in so many ways. As seniors, we are that hala. As we reach our roots deep, into the culture and history of our lives here at Punahou, even as we extend our branches far beyond. Lately, I have been feeling like my freshman self all over again, intimidated by the new world ahead, but what I am so lucky to know now, and what I wish I could have told my freshman self just four years ago, is to be the hala, to know that I will always have my roots connected to the waters of my home, but I can let my branches extend into the unfamiliar so that I can become whatever and whoever I am meant to be. So seniors, class of 2023, even as we prepare for the strange and unfamiliar world ahead of us, let us embrace who we were yesterday. Remember that childish wonder of playing beside the lily pond. Cherish who we are today. Seniors waving goodbye to a home created by the story of Kapunaho, and allow ourselves to grow into whatever we may be tomorrow. Class of 2023, before you ever stepped foot in an academy classroom, your reputation preceded you. You were known to be kind, compliant, and punctual. And while your punctuality may have receded a bit over the past few months, <laughs> we have found that the class of 2023 to be all these things and so much more, both as individuals and Together, you have proven to be full of kindness, empathy, compassion, and generosity. You do the small things that make a big difference. You show up, you volunteer, and you do the work, not just for yourselves, but for the benefit of others. In short, you are a class rooted in strong morals and positive values. And while Dean Aaron and I would love to take credit for this, the truth is, this is who you are and who you have always been. 
Christine, Dean, and I feel blessed to have been your deans these past four years. You have been a wonderful class, and yet our time together has been incredibly challenging. Just as you were becoming steady on your feet as academy students, the rug was pulled out from under you. You left for spring break as ninth graders with most of your high school years ahead of you. And soon it was unclear if school would ever be the same again. COVID-19 brought on a global pandemic and an abundance of issues and disruptions none could have predicted. You faced lockdowns and mask mandates, toilet paper shortages and cringy TikTok challenges. And while our sourdough starters may not have survived, you did more than survive. You thrived. You learned how to learn online and you usually remembered to unmute yourself before speaking in class. From block schedules to home base, you embraced new friends and found ways to stay connected with old ones. You took us back in time to 99 and persevered as we slowly made our way back to normal. Through it all, you stuck together, stayed positive, and remained the kind, empathetic, and generous class you have always been. And as seniors, it seems as though you have saved your best year for, your, for last. This year, you have been nothing short of miraculous. You successfully produced the first variety show with all original music and with the highest class partici participation rate ever. Your hard work led to being some of the first students to earn center distinctions, and you have won more than your fair share of awards, recognitions, scholarships, and championships. Through an unprecedented time of economic disruption, political unrest, and civil protest, you did not retreat or become victims of your circumstances. You learned, you leaned in to learn more and become more civically engaged and informed. You educated yourselves and each other on the issues we faced. And perhaps most impressively, you shared what you learned not with a sense of self-righteous indignation, but rather with a sense of generosity and belief that sharing one's knowledge will benefit all. Like a rising tide lifts all ships. Franklin D. Roosevelt once said, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. The class of 2023 has become a class of expert sailors. So as you leave the safe harbor of Punahou, and the watchful, caring eyes of your compassionate families, teachers, coaches, and mentors, we are confident that you are prepared to face whatever may come. We know that the same virtues that allowed you to overcome unprecedented change and instability will guide you through whatever comes next. Class of 2023, you will be venturing out to an impressive array of schools and opportunities around the world. You will pursue many diverse callings and your collective constellations of talents, passions, and found purpose will undoubtedly continue to grow. This eclectic group will go on to do many things. You will become chefs and surgeons, entrepreneurs and educators, artists and authors. You will each find your personal definition of success and capture it. And while we are confident that you have the educational foundation, intellectual talent, drive, and worth ethic to do well, what is most impressive is that you possess the heart, empathy, compassion, and generosity to do good. This capacity to do good is exactly why all of us here supporting you today believe you will, you will be the leaders we need for our collective future. We do not mistake your aloha for weakness. We know you are up to the challenge. As we face many challenges, some old, such as bigotry, sexism, racism, climate change, political and economic uncertainty, and some new, such as the moral dilemmas that come with technological advances like AI. Shout out to Chat GPT for writing this speech. 
But in all seriousness, we are at a point in history where people are becoming more and more polarized. And we are in desperate need of bridge builders like you. Leaders with the ability to disagree and partake in civil discourse with conviction while maintaining respect for others. Problem solvers who could bring diverse perspectives and talents together for a common good. Leaders who can inspire others and motivate them to bring their best selves and talents to the table. As the first class to take on the UN Sustainability Goals in your Global Sustainability by Design classes, we have seen you take the first steps towards becoming these leaders. Many of you have already begun this work. Some of you have fostered leadership skills programs for young people focusing on environmental stewardship. Others have worked with local community organizations to combat food insecurity. You have launched organizations that host school supply drives for students in needs and have submitted testimony in front of the legislature to protect our communities. You have fabricated a battery-powered and solar-charged train to illustrate the expansive potential of renewable and alternative energy and even design inclusive curriculum for Punahou and Hawaii's public schools to broaden students' understanding of their culture and history. And this is just the beginning of what you soon-to-be Punahou graduates will bring to the world. After four years of shepherding this delightful class through quite possibly the most turbulent four years of high school in Punahou's 182-year history, we are exhausted, but we sleep well at night knowing the class of 2023 will be the next generation of leaders. You have illustrated time and time again that your compassion, optimism, creativity, and strong morals make a positive impact on Punahou's community and beyond. We're excited for a bright future with you leading the way. Class of 2023, we love you, we are proud of you, and we feel honored to have served as your deeds. We know you will continue to do well and do good. Aloha, ahuiho. Good afternoon, class of 2023. On behalf of the faculty, I am honored to speak to you at this very special moment in your graduation journey. In my many years of teaching, this is the greatest honor that a class has ever given to me. And as the parent of a senior, it is especially meaningful. In thinking about a baccalaureate speech, I wanted to focus on an introspective moment, a moment for us to gather our feelings before, we, before your big night and your big celebration. So how do we focus that lens to make this a time of reflection? Those of you who had me in class might feel a turn to your neighbor and share moment coming up, but this time you can answer that question to yourself. In my own reflection and searching, I went down the rabbit hole of finding the perfect inspirational poem to share, not the typical Robert Frost or Mary Oliver classic that you might read in Amlet, an ode to roads not traveled, or to find beauty in the simplicity of the earth. Even for an environmental science teacher, 
These did not quite fit the bill. I came across a poem by poet laureate Billy Collins, known for his simple yet humorous insights into the human experience. While he has shared this poem frequently, from local readings to the White House, I love how it speaks to today for us. The Lanyard by Billy Collins. The other day, as I was ricocheting slowly off the blue walls of this room, bouncing from typewriter to piano, from bookshelf to an envelope lying on the floor, I found myself in the L section of the dictionary, where my eyes fell upon the word lanyard. No cookie nibbled by a French novelist could, spend, could send one more suddenly into the past, a past where I sat at a workbench, at a camp, by a deep Adirondack lake, learning how to braid thin plastic strips into a lanyard, a gift from my mother. I had never seen anyone use a lanyard or wear one if that's what you did with them, but that did not keep me from crossing strand over strand, again and again, until I had made a boxy red and white lanyard for my mother. She gave me life and milk from her breasts, and I gave her a lanyard. She nursed me in many a sick room, lifted teaspoons of medicine to my lips, set cold face cloths on my forehead, and then led me out into the airy light and taught me to walk and swim. And I, in turn, presented her with a lanyard. Here are thousands of meals, she said, and here is clothing and a good education. And here is your lanyard, I replied, which I made with a little help from a counselor. Here is a breathing body and a beating heart strong legs, bones, and teeth, two clear eyes to read the world, she whispered. And here, I said, is the lanyard I made at camp. And here, I wish to say to her now, is a smaller gift, not the archaic truth that you can never repay your mother, but the rueful admission that when she took the two-tone lanyard from my hands, I was as sure as a boy could be that this useless, worthless thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. This poem is a celebration of the enduring bond between caregivers and the children they raise and besides the reference to the typewriter and dictionary, it is timeless. It highlights that commodities such as love and nurturing can never be repaid or measured. What lanyards have you woven? You probably have a few classics lying around, clay beads strung into necklaces, houses made of wooden building blocks strategically glued together, Pictures of toothless smiles beaming through frames made of pasta. A book of coupons redeemable for free hugs or a clean room. Think about how it felt to give these gifts, these small gestures of love, but woven by sweet hands, these small gestures of love became powerful representations of gratitude that this thing I wove out of boredom would be enough to make us even. When I think about your gifts, I think of the times you've shown up for each other with empathy, gratitude, and care in immeasurable ways. Each memory acts as a unique lanyard, holding moments, emotions, and experiences that have shaped who you are when you arrived in the academy in ninth grade, who would have thought that the world had much more to serve you 
than anyone, even adults, could ever imagine. Within a few months, a global pandemic would push your 14-year-old self into digging deeper than you've ever had to. Then abruptly and without warning, a piece of this class, a piece of our hearts, was taken in the cruelest of ways. The loss of Micah was more than we thought we could bear. And there are warriors in this room who have suffered parental loss, family loss, profound loss that only a few of me, you may even be aware of. My heart breaks, then fills with admiration and respect as I watch you support each other through the journey this class has been on. So before the celebrations and the busyness of this week, take a moment now to make space and sit briefly with that loved one and know they're with you. How can their spirit carry on through you as a gift to us all? The spirit of 2023, you gave it to each other, and now you will share it with the world. The way you thought it was so tongue-in-cheek to give your carnival a throwback theme of back in time to 99, way back to 99, when I was already well-established as a teacher here. The way you made music and laughter out of a variety show that was truly your own, named after an unlikely yet persistent candidate. The manner in which you showed up for an exquisite return to hold a coup of the past with energy and enthusiasm that could not be contained. You may have had your time cut short, but you certainly made up for it. Now, as you gather these gifts and prepare to leave this place, I am so excited to think about the lives you will weave with your classmates, your future partners, friends, and coworkers. You will forge, forge bonds that transcend backgrounds and circumstances and fortify areas of vulnerability. Moreover, your compassionate spirit will serve as a guiding thread throughout. We are so proud of each and every one of you. We have received so much good in our lives from you. Thank you for sharing your gifts with us.
class of 2023. We spent many times in chapels together and I've shared many words from scripture and there's one that comes to mind for this particular day. It's from the words of the Apostle Paul, Saint Paul, speaking to the church, his friends at Philippi. And this is what he said to them and, and think about this because I believe it's true for each and every one of you. He said, I thank my God every time I think of you. And in all my prayers, I always pray for you because I know the one who began a good work in you will see it through to completion. The one who began a good work in each and every one of you will see it through to completion. God is with you. God will walk with you. Hold on to each other. Hold on to life. Hold on to the things that you've gained here at the New Spring Kapunaho. And as I always say to you, be that light. You are the light of the world. And one last time, the Lord be with you. God bless you and keep you. God's face shine upon you. God, be gracious unto you and be known to you in a special way. Amen.